Now, if like me, you've ever bought boots either online or in a shop and you felt that they fit all right, you go out hunting in them for the first time, you're halfway around the first field or up the first hill and you realize these boots don't fit right. Well, at that point, you're usually stuck with them because what you've done is you've worn them outside, you've got mud on them and you can't return them then. Now, most shops and suppliers will take boots back if they've only been worn in the house. So we've put together this 10 step guide to make sure that your boots fit perfectly before you even leave home. Now, before we even start, it's essential that you're wearing suitable socks for this. My preference is a medium cushion smart wool. These come in various lengths and these are basically all I wear when I'm hunting. Step one is to remove the insole from the boot and place on the floor. Now wearing the socks you intend to wear while stalking, place your foot on the insole with your heel right at the back and put all your weight down. You should have approximately a finger's width of space at the front. This is just a very rough guide to make sure the boots fit, but if your foot is right at the front of the insole, you can be certain that the boot is too small. Step two, loosen the laces off right to the bottom of the boot and slide your feet in. Now, tap your heels to the back of the boot. I think I'll miss you most of all. This ensures your feet are in the right position in the boot before you start lacing. Step three, before lacing, ensure your leg is at a 90 degree angle to your foot. You don't want to be leaning back or forward or it'll make it difficult to tighten the boot correctly. Also make sure that the tongue is in a central position. When lacing the boot, I like to continually wiggle my foot just to make sure it's tightening evenly and consistently. Now we've got the boots on, they should be laced snugly but not too tight. When you lean back and forward, you shouldn't be feeling any great pressure at the front or at the back. I like to be able to fit a finger snugly down either side and at the back and front of the boot. When we're comfortable with how they're laced, this is when the real work starts. I like to wear them around the house for 30 minutes to an hour. What I'm looking for is to make sure my feet feel comfortable. There's no pinching at the sides here, that my toe isn't hitting the front, that there's no heel lift at the back when I'm walking my heel isn't coming away from the sole and that there's no discomfort around here where this leather bends as I'm walking. Well now I've been in these boots around the house for just over an hour. I've sat and watched some TV, I've had my dinner, all the time sort of being aware of how they felt, any chance I got and giving my feet a good wiggle. Um, they've settled in quite nicely. They've had to be tightened up quite a few times. This one's just loosening again, so just, um, just tighten up this one. But this is where trying them on in a shop just doesn't really work. When you can wear them for a couple of hours around the house, you start to get a better feel for them. You start to feel if there's any issues. So the next step, I want to do is to start rolling up onto my tiptoes as if you're walking and what I'm looking for here is just to make sure the heel isn't coming away from the sole inside the boot which over multiple thousands of steps could cause an issue with a blister and I'm also looking to make sure that the boot is flexing it's that sort of walking motion really exaggerating as you would be if you were climbing so I'm just gonna climb up and down the stairs, focusing on using the toe portion of the boot as I'm climbing up and pushing right down in the boot as if you were climbing up a mountain or a steep slope. And what that will do is it'll push my heel tight into the back of the boot and it'll also push the front of my shin into the front of the boot. And it'll very quickly highlight if there's any issues there, if the boot is too tight or gonna be uncomfortable in any way. And then on the way down, I'm gonna take quite exaggerated steps just to make sure my toes don't hit the front of the boot. Now the next step is a really important one and you don't wanna be caught out by 
it's to make sure that you can drive safely in your new boots. Now I know it's not gonna be an issue with these because these are very flexible and quite soft already, but it can be an issue with certain types of mountaineering boots or boots with particularly stiff soles or very high leg boots with a massive amount of support. You can put them on in your house in the morning and you go out and you start driving and if you quickly need to hit the brakes, you don't have the feel and flexibility to do so safely and it can cause issues. Step eight, make sure your socks are long enough. I see loads and loads of people, they buy real high boots higher than these and their socks are maybe an inch or two inches too short for that specific boot. And that can cause real issues with blisters, abrasion, and it can make you sweat as well. If this material is rubbing directly on your skin, it can cause sweaty patches and it's just not a pleasant feeling at all. Step nine, try your new boots with different weight socks. As I said before, I'm a believer in smart wool, medium cushion, and that's what I wear most of the time, probably 90% of my stocks. But if you're gonna be doing a lot of high seat shooting, you may prefer a real heavy sock like this. I would advise you try your new boots with those socks that you intend to wear, because it may be that a thick pair of socks like that puts you up a half size or maybe even a whole size. And if you try and walk in those heavy socks, then the boot is too tight, gonna to cause you issues with heel pain or maybe even hitting the front of the boot. And last but not least, number 10, make sure that you try the boots at the end of a long day, either in work or a long walk or a hunt. Come home when you're tired, your feet are sore and stick your new boots on then just to see how they feel when you're tired, when your feet are sore from a long day. So it's always a good idea to try that. As I say, I'll probably try these in the house for four or five days before I wear them outside. At the end of that time, I can still send them back if needs be. There'll be no marks on the soles. I won't have worn them outside at all. And they can still go back and be returned. Boots are too expensive to buy them and not use them. So we need to do everything we can to ensure the fit is perfect.